Guys, welcome back to the channel. This is the big one. In today's video, we're gonna be changing the PVC unit and rectifying the dreaded Audi Turbo Killer. Something that's already been done under factory warranty as part of the recall, but I'm gonna be doing it again and I'll explain to you exactly why later in the video. Come on. So for those of you who've been following some of the previous videos, you might remember we had a conversation around why my fuel, or sorry, why my oil smells like fuel. So when I've been lifting up the oil cap and giving it a little smell, just smell the smell of fuel in the oil. So I had a few theories around why that was, and we went through that in the last video on the board. We've changed the high pressure fuel pumps. We've done an oil flush, and the oil still smells like fuel. The next thing on my list is to replace the positive crankcase ventilation unit that fits right here in the bowels of the engine. And the plan is, replace that because that's something that's known to fail anyway, and probably will fail in the near future. This is a big challenge for any mechanic, but for a novice mechanic, a DIY mechanic, it's gonna be an interesting one. Right, so enough talking, let's get the car prepped, in the air, and crack on with this job. The first step is to disconnect the battery. To do this, grab a 10mm spanner and disconnect the negative terminal of the battery. This will make sure no airbag sensors go off when we start stripping the front end of the car. So one thing I'm gonna do is just put some masking tape along the edge of this wing here. So when I pop this bumper out next, it's not gonna pop up and scratch the side of the wing when I'm doing it on my own. Otherwise that'd be a pain in the ass having to get repainted. Next up, under trays off. For this, we need to remove several T30 Torx bolts and four M10 spline bolts. All right, so that's the T30 screws out. Now we've got the M10 spline for these last four bolts. And I think we possibly might have a coolant leak under here that we need to fix as well. Another job for the list. Wheels off time. And I find a wheel alignment tool always comes in handy here to stop the wheels falling off when you take the last bolt out. With the wheels removed, that now gives us access to remove the inner wheel arch lining, taking out the T25 screws and paying particular attention to remove the headlight condensation drain pipe. This is important for later on when you take out the headlights. We then need to remove these three torque screws that hold this side of the bumper on. We can now repeat the process at the other side, removing the torque screws, holding the wheel lining in, making sure to disconnect the headlight condensation pipe, and then finally disconnecting the washer jet pipe. We then need to remove these three torque screws that hold this side of the bumper on. So guys, while we're here, we'll just have a quick look at the massive Audi brakes on the RS6. Six pot calipers and 345mm diameter discs, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. 
these will be getting replaced in another video they still work pretty good but they're they're just starting to get a bit of a lip on them now so we did put new pads in a few months back but new discs are definitely coming soon certainly because they just look ugly and i want a nice shiny disc through the wheel but another video coming on that in the future oh it's a good job i had a bucket ready for all of that Finally, on each side, there are three 10mm bolts that will need to be removed to loosen the bracket that holds the side of the bumper on. Take off all the trim piece now. Oh, one's just popped down the engine bay. I'll have to find that later. These last two T30 torque screws are finally what hold the bumper in place. Once removed, the bumper can slide off. Okay, that's the last two screws. Let's see if we can slide this off without doing any damage. And you'll see I've put the box here just to rest it on. Because once we slide this back a bit, we're gonna to have to undo the connectors and the washer jets and things like that. Oh, what a bumper or front fender if you're American. I know some of you viewers are American, which is great. Hope you're enjoying the content. If you're new, don't forget to subscribe. Oh, yes! Vorsprung Dirk Technique. Jesus Christ, this is big. Woo! Quite heavy these. So this is why you need to make sure you undo that condensation drain pipe from your inner wheel arch line. Otherwise, when you pull this out, you might drop it and snag it. There you go, guys. One very fine RS6 headlight. Expensive headlight. To remove your headlight, you need to take out the screw in the middle, the one at the far back in the wheel arch, a third one right at the front near side, and finally, one just underneath the headlight in the wheel arch. God, this one's tight. Put a bit of penetrating fluid on that, I think. Last thing we want to do is break a bolt or a screw in the headlight. That probably would be expensive. Oh God, what a fanny on that was. Right, I want to say it, but off camera I spent about 45 minutes trying to undo this one bolt because it was seized and then the threads had gone so it was just spinning. But we got there in the end with a little bit of persistence, time and patience. So this is the second, very expensive, very nice Audi RS6 headlight out. I'm just getting ready now to put it in service mode. I did take the front crash bar off, but I might not need it to have done that. What we need to do now to put it in service mode is disconnect the two overflow pipes from the coolant reservoir. And then down here, we need to undo that bolt. And then underneath, we've got two bolts here. Take that one out, and we're gonna put a longer bolt in there, which is what's gonna allow the crash bar and the front rad pack to slide back. And then we'll take that one out fully. So we'll do that next.
nothing's connected, nothing's loose, that should be, I can pull this back a little bit, and that's service mode. I'm just going to give it a good once over, make sure, and I'll tell you what we're going to do next. So this should now give me just enough access to get to the front of this intake manifold bit here and just undo the four or five screws just along here now. So we've got one there, one underneath, same with that side, possibly one or two there. And what I can do is I can get my new DeWalt ratchet, give that some action today, and then just pop that bad boy down here Zip, zip. Zip, zip. Easy. Nice. Right, before I crack on and start taking the engine apart, I'm going to have a little tidy up around here because I like a clean workshop and there's nothing worse than having tools and bolts and parts all over where you can A, lose them, B, trip over them, or C, damage them. So we'll cut to a little time lapse. We'll get tied up, squared up. I might make a brew and then we'll, that's a cup of coffee, or coffee if you're American. Then we'll crack on, we'll get the throttle bodies off, intercooler off, and then we'll see what the PVC unit looks like. Come on then guys. Right, I'm happy now. Everything's clean, tidy and organised. We can crack on with the next part. Let's go! Right guys, so I mentioned earlier that I think I've got a coolant leak. Well, I've definitely got a coolant leak. Well, upon further inspection, I can see the leak is coming just from that connector in that pipe there. So, not a major issue, but given the access and where the clip is, I'm going to really struggle to get that off and put a new clip on, so I think I'm going to have to take the drain the coolant and take the front end off, the rad pack off, unfortunately. I'll do that later, but also I've noticed this coolant pipe for this radiator here is absolutely corroded almost through. So at some point, it connects there, goes down, and connects just under there. At some point, that's going to fail anyway, so I think I need to get a new one of those. So I'll fix that while I'm fixing that. But we'll do that in another video. RS6, the gift that keeps on giving. Labour of love. Next up, I'm going to loosen the clamps that connect the silicon pipes to the turbos. We're then going to remove the screws to take out the additional pipe work that's connected to the throttle body itself, and also make sure any of the vacuum lines, pipe work, or sensors are disconnected so we can pull this unit out in one piece. So guys, after a bit of deliberation, I'm going to drain the coolant because I'm going to have to drain it anyway to fix that coolant leak and replace that pipe. So it's just going to make things a little bit easier. So let's drain the coolant. Well, that means I'm going to have to buy a new vacuum tool so I can refill the coolant now. The gift that keeps on giving. Don't believe it. So when Audi has had this apart last, they've rounded off the torque screws, so the torques end for the coolant pipe here. So I'm not sure how I'm gonna get this off yet. I'm gonna have to have a think about it. Oh yes guys, I've just got, rather than a T25 Torx, I've just put a T30 in and give it a bit of a whack with a hammer just to try and 
groove into the threads, into the air, uh, the torques at the end. And it's just been enough to get it out, so lucky escape. Right, I need to get this throttle body off. And there's a few screws here that could be quite tricky to do. So I'm gonna crack on with that and I'll check back with you in a second. Oh guys, what a pig this one was to get to. And for a brief second, I thought this Allen head was rounded as well. If that was rounded, who knows how we'd have got that out. Anyway, she's coming. It's stuff like this, which is why I can see these jobs can end up so expensive. I've spent an hour trying to get a headlight bolt out, and I've spent about 30 minutes just trying to get this one bolt out as well. So straight away, that's like nearly... Quick maths, an hour and a half worth of time, just on two bolts. What I'm gonna do now is just undo these last few screws at the front of here, and I'm gonna use my new Dewalt ratchet, and then hopefully we can get this into the cooler pack out. Nice. First blood drawn. Right guys, I've just double checked everything and I've just loosened these charge pipes at the top a little bit more with a pick. So I think we just need to give it a bit of a wiggle and see if we can ease it out. This is what we've all been building up for. All right, let's give it a go. I can smell fuel already just from the, the intake. So maybe this PVC valve isn't too great and there's a lot of vapors getting through there. And that's just with the air intake off. Sorry, the throttle body off. Oh, there she comes. Ah, see, right. Right, there's a hose at the back here that's still connected. It's one of those use once clips, so disconnect that. It should come out easily. Right, guys, after about another hour of messing around, just connecting coolant pipes, pulling this rad pack back a bit. Still not quite worked out how to fully get it off yet, so I can fix that coolant leak at a later date. But it's back enough to pull out this intercooler housing and PVC unit, so. Let's get this off. We'll have a look at it on the bench and then we might have to call it a night. I'm ready for a beer. Right. Oh. Right. Here she is. Let's go and have a look at her on the bench. Right, here's the actual unit itself. It was quite the uh, the ordeal to remove it. So this is the intercooler at the top, or the charge cooler. And then this is the where the throttle body housing goes on to. Well, that is the throttle body housing. Correct me if I'm wrong. But this bit attached to it, so this is all one unit, but this bit attached to it, is the actual oil separator, the, pro the positive crank ventilation unit, not the PCV or PVC that I keep saying throughout the video. Definitely isn't PVC, that's just for the weekends. So this is what we're gonna be changing over. So we've got a brand new one here from Audi and a few of the little Audi goodies here that we'll go through in the next video. I was gonna change this out now on the bench, but I think for today's video, I'm just gonna go away get that front radiator pack off and then we'll call it a day for this video because it's been quite a long day. Right guys, it's end of day one. What a day it's been. There's quite a lot that's been dismantled here. It could be a little bit daunting, but we're gonna trust the process and go with it. As you can see, Dad's garage is in quite the mess. We're gonna have a look at that tomorrow. We're gonna replace the PVC unit on that. We've got headlights safe over there in the corner. We've got stuff here, we've got wheels down here. 
And then if I take you around this way, this is where you'll see exactly where we've got to in the dismantling process. Oh yes. So we end up taking this right pack completely off because we've got that coolant leak around the pipes here. And the only way to get to that really, to get to this pipe and this pipe properly. In fact, I think that's the culprit there. This tiny little thing, this clip here, is where the leak was coming from. But the only way to get to that was to take all of this front end off. So there's a lot of coolant pipes that have been disconnected. There's a lot of wires and sensors that have been disconnected. And there's a lot of bolts and screws that have been undone. But I've organized them all in, in little bags like this. So I know where everything goes, where everything's off. So I don't forget, hopefully, when I'm putting it back together. There's quite a bit of work to do here. It's taken maybe six hours, probably seven hours, including doing the filming to get to this point. But it is a bit of a labor of love. And hopefully it's proof to you guys that, well, certainly you can take things apart. We'll see if we can get things put back together. That's a different story. But yeah, um, Pretty bad, pretty bruised. I've stabbed myself about 10 times with one of those little picks getting those pipes off. I've got so many puncture wounds on my fingers. But yeah, so this is where we are. So stay tuned for the next one when we'll carry on rectifying the PVC unit. We've still got to take off this plate here and get to the turbo killer. I might redo the um, auxiliary belt as well. I mean, it doesn't look too bad to be honest. It's a bit covered in kilt in the moment. I'll see. It might be something we choose to do while we're on because it's a pain in the ass to get back to this point to do it again in the, in the future if need be, but we'll see how we go. So yeah, so I hope you enjoyed this one. Lots more to be getting on with. I mean, there's wires and cables all over, but that's part of the fun, I guess. So, if you haven't already, subscribe, give me a like, and I'll see you in the next one when we start to put some of this complete note of chaos back together. Thanks for watching.